Hi SQL folks, welcome to another video from SQL Maestros. Today we are going to talk about plan cache bloating. Now as part of your query tuning efforts, you're also dealing with the plan cache. Plan cache bloating is a scenario where you have a lot of ad hoc queries in your plan cache and which increases the size of the plan cache. When I say the size of the plan cache, it means the amount of memory this cache is consuming. How does plan cache bloating really happen? One of the reasons is a lot of ad hoc queries get inside the plan cache. Now ad hoc queries in general is not a problem. It is in fact a feature of an OLTP application. An OLTP application is bound to have a lot of ad hoc queries coming in. But the problem is when these queries are similar in nature, the only differentiating factor is the parameter value. In other words, the predicate, the filter. So when you have these queries that are similar in nature, technically speaking, we say that the signature is same, which means the select statement is same, the parameter, the predicate is only different. And many of these, when they go inside the plan cache, they're not coming back again, which means these are kind of single use plans, which means for every ad hoc query, SQL Server is going to create an execution plan and then that plan is not going to be used again and it's just going to lie in the plan cache without any purpose. Now plan cache bloating, as I explained earlier, means a lot of memory consumption, which means maybe good plans that you need may get kicked out and then those queries, if they come back again, the plans have to be recreated, which means uh, compilation, optimization and more CPU cycle consumption. So some of those, uh, you know, cascading effects can happen when you have plan cache bloating issue. So the first step towards troubleshooting the plan cache bloating scenario is to identify how many similar queries you have and then how many similar execution plans that you have or how many distinct execution plans that you have for those queries. So let's jump into the demo right away and try to understand the internals of plan cache and then let's try to identify and fix a few things. Okay, let's get started. We're going to use Northwind 2 for the purpose of this demo. Let's bring the results pane a little down. Now, if you look at these select statements, there are five of them and the way they are written, you can easily make out that all these five select statements are exactly the same. In sense, their signatures are same, which means if you look at select start from orders where customer ID is equal to. So until this point, everything is same. The only differentiating factor and what separates them from each other is this value, the predicate, the filter there. So you have five of them and you will also observe if you look at this carefully that the first select statement and the third one are exactly the same, which means they are textually identical. The parameter value is also the same. And of course, the second one has Shobs, the fourth one has Amit, and the last one has Bunsel. So you have five select statements where first and the third look textually identical, and then you have the remaining ones. Now, if we execute all five select statements going by what you see on the screen now here, you might expect that SQL Server will create four execution plans, right? Why? Because the first one and the third one are the same. So the execution plan gets created when you execute the first one. And when the third query comes in, that plan gets reused. This is what we are going to see. So let's go and execute these five select statements. Just let's wait for a few seconds. Okay, we are done. All five are done. I'm just going to turn off the execution plan there. Okay, now let's go and first see what we have inside the plan cache. So inside the plan cache, if you see that, look at this, this is your, um, all the four queries that are there. So all the four select statements, and you know that the first one and the third one was this. So if you look at the use count, we have a value of two. And for the remaining ones, you have a value of one. So uh, in, uh, in, in hindsight, you will see that, okay, there are four execution plans. So these are compiled plans. And as we talked about the object type, these are 
ad hoc queries. Now, what you are seeing here right now is four execution plans, okay? And, but then what we want to find out is are these queries similar? Now, of course, this is an engineer demo, so I just run five select statements and you can have, you can have an easy look at them. But in real world, you will get hundreds and thousands of similar workloads. So it's very difficult to identify which are similar, which are dissimilar, etc. So let's go and execute a stored procedure. I've written a stored procedure here called find similar queries. Let's go and execute this. And the output is going to be very interesting. Let's go and execute this. So what is happening here is number of entries for what am I trying to do? I'm trying to find out uh, find out all the similar queries. Here is a sample query and the number of entries are four. Why? Because the first one and the third one were exactly similar. So there are four entries of queries where the signature is same. So how do we identify if the signature of a query is same as another query? Well, there is an attribute called query hash. So if you go to the DM, VSS DM, um, DM exec query stats, each query has a signature and that signature is identified using the hash value of the query and that is stored in this attribute query hash. So all you have to do is group on the query hash. So when you group on the query hash, you can club all of them together and do a count of it, which gives me four. So we ran five select statements first one and the third queries were exactly same. So they're not going to be counted as two. They're going to be counted as one. And then you have the remaining three, which gives us four entries. We get any one of a, a, a sample query by using a min or the max statement or whatever. And then you have a sample plan. Now talking about plan here, well, these queries are same, fine. Their signatures are same. They're similar, all good. What about the execution plans? Do they have the same execution plans? So what you could do is tweak, tweak the query a bit. And then I've written another one, which is like find similar plans. I should not be calling this as find similar plans. I rather would have called it as find distinct plans because what I want to know is do these queries, the four of them that we ran, do all of them have the same plan or do they have a different plan? And this might surprise you a bit. Again, all troubleshooting, right? So let's go and execute this one, find similar plans. When you create this proc, call it as find distinct plans. Let's go and execute this. What do you get? So query hash number of entries were four. We saw this earlier, but then it tells us that plans, distinct plans are two. So what does this mean? You had run five queries, fair enough. Number of entries were four because first and the third one were same. But then these four queries in total have two execution plans, two distinct plans. That is surprising because all these four queries are exactly same, exactly similar. I mean, why do they create a different plan? At least one of them is creating a different plan and we need to understand why. So you, you can actually go and click on the sample plan here, but then this will just give you one plan. You want to find out what's the other one. So anyway, this is a, a troubleshooting scenario. So let's go and figure out why are we getting two distinct plans for four queries that look exactly the same. Let's go back to the queries. Okay, so what do we see here? Let's go and execute the first one and we'll turn on the actual execution plan. Let's do this. Okay, we execute this and we see 14 rows being returned. Let's go to the execution plan. We get a clustered index scan. So this is the first execution plan. Okay, let's go and execute the second query with parameter value chops. Let's go and execute this. And we see again a clustered index scan, fair enough. So this is like the plan being reused. Let's go and execute the third one, which is the same as the first one. So of course you're going to get everything exactly the same. What about Amit and Bunsen? Let's go and execute this. Now you see that no records are returned. So this is an empty result set, of course, because there's no customer ID with Amit or Bunsel probably. And let's go and jump over to the execution plan. And you see that this is not a clustered index scan. Instead, this is an index seek operation. So what is happening here is 
Based on cardinality estimation, the optimizer is deploying a different access method. The optimizer knows from the virtue of statistics that when you have parameter values like Hanar, Chops or whatever, then there are some amount of records being returned. And then those statistics tell optimizer that when the parameter value, when the predicate filter is Amit or Bunsel, then the uh, estimated number of rows probably is just negligible or nil, whatever. Let's go and look into on the, onto the cursor here so you can see estimated number of rows is just one. So what SQL Server optimizer decides, and you know that it's a cost-based optimizer. So it knows that, okay, if the estimation is just one, then scanning the entire table might be an expensive operation. A quicker thing to do is to seek on the index index here. So it seeks on a non-clustered index for these two. So this is Amit and Pansel. So this will also give you an index seek operation. Repeating this again, which means why are we getting a scan operation here? Because for these predicates, SQL Server knows that some amount of data is going to be returned and an index seek operation combined with the key, uh, book, uh, sorry, key lookup, bookmark lookup is uh, going to be an expensive operation. So it thinks that, okay, cost-based uh, scanning is a better choice. So if you take the cursor over the arrow here, you can see, um, let's go and zoom in a bit. You can see estimated number of rows is 14 and actual is 14. So it knows that, okay, 14 times seeking and doing the lookup is more expensive than just going and scanning the table because the table is relatively very small. There are just 830 orders in this table. So you get two distinct plans. Now, this is just a very high level overview of how you are troubleshooting plan cache. So many times we are working with queries and we focus on tuning queries. That's good. That's great. But when you talk about general slowness on the server, you have to look at these caches. Uh, one of the biggest cache, as you know, is the buffer pool, which will cache the data page. And then probably at the second spot, you get the execution plan cache. And you got to look into the plan cache, how big it is, what is the size, how many plans you have in it, uh, how many distinct plans are there, how many similar queries are there, what are the use counts, recompilation, etc, etc. All right, hope you enjoyed this uh, demo, hope you enjoyed the learning here. I'm sure what you're thinking is, what are, what are, what are the scripts that are running behind these stored procedures? Yes, I would love that you have these scripts. So in order to get these scripts, you can go to sqlmaestros.com. And when you go to that website, you have the resources section. Somewhere on the menu item or top bar, you will see resources. You can go to resources and you can download these scripts. The link is there in the description of this video. Hope this demo was worth your time. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter at the rate SQL Maestros and myself A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.